So let's start by going over last night's homework, which um, for all but one, we've already discussed this chapter, in fact. So if you did not notice, or if you went through your answers, they should have all been decreasing. So we'll go over why. So we already went over the first one yesterday. So we talked about um, when warm uh, air, it rises. So it's no longer pushing down if it's rising. So we have less pressure. Um, On to this one, what happens um, when temperature increases? Relative humidity would decrease. And we talked about this one a couple times now. We talked about how in the morning it's cold. So we've got cold air in the morning and cold air can't hold very much water. So it looks like this container, but warm air can hold a lot of water. So it looks like this container. So as temperature increases throughout the day, we go from having a relative humidity of 100% when there's dew on the grass, to being less than 100% once that uh, sun warms up the temperature. So as temperature increases, relative humidity decreases. Uh, then we were down here to the third one. As temperature increases, density decreases. We've talked about this since the beginning of the year, that warm air, that molecules spread out, so they are not tightly packed, so they are less dense. One we have, the only one that we have not talked about is this uh, this one that says, as altitude increases, water vapor decreases. So as you go higher in the sky, there will be less water. And the reason for that is because as you go higher in the sky, what happens to temperature? It decreases. And what do we know about cold air? can't hold as much water as warm air. So as you go higher in the atmosphere, it gets colder and cold air can't hold as much water as warm air. So that one is also a decreasing line. And then the last two here, uh, these two, so, uh, oh, sorry, these two. As altitude increases in the troposphere, the temperature will decrease. And remember, as warm air rises, it spreads out. So those hot molecules are not touching each other. So they're going to cool off and it's gonna get colder as we go up in the atmosphere. So a low altitude is a higher temperature. A high altitude is a cold temperature. And then finally, altitude increases, uh, pressure decreases. And we did talk about that with my beautiful drawing with the airplanes. Uh, as you go higher in the atmosphere, there is less atmosphere pushing down on you. So there is less pressure. So the graphs themselves, the relationships are really not the important part here. The important part of this homework was you were able to work them out. Really the reason was the uh, point of doing the, this lab is that you, un or not this lab, this homework. Uh, you do need to be able to explain yourself um, as you go through this. So you needed to know why. The why is the important part. Uh, yesterday, we talked about pressure. Back on page 29. I would like, well, 29 was the reading. We actually did the notes on page 31. Sorry. Notes look like this. There is a blank table for the differences and the similarities on the bottom. I would like you to review what we did yesterday and fill out the similarities and the differences here on the bottom of page 31. So if you need to review what we did yesterday, do that first. I'll put that up there in case anybody needs it. <laughs> Zach. Anybody else who wasn't here, there's the notes from yesterday. And then go ahead and see if you can summarize those notes from yesterday and do the similarities and differences on the bottom of page 31.
So again, you're just reviewing what we did yesterday and filling out the similarities and the differences on the bottom of this page. This is the region here. Oh, no. because I messed that up. Okay, that's why. <laughs> All right, so after we do Yeah, because we have actually already the original down and then the grade one that was done. So, so I, knew, I knew we had already had this conversation. Which puts it on that Do we have some similarities and differences between these? Let's start with some differences. What could we uh, fill in here for the differences for a high pressure? What's a huge difference with high pressure? McKenna? It is dry, cool, and clear in the words of my eighth grade science teacher. Hi, dry, cool, and clear. Yeah, uh, Kaylee, got another one? What the? Well, now give me another one. The density. So uh, high pressure, what is the density for a high pressure? Yep, higher density. Um, and the don't, I don't think we have room for much more. Does anybody have one more bullet we could squeeze in there? Jack? Clockwise. Yes. So air moves clockwise. I'm going to try and squeeze it in out and down. <coughs> Those are the three bullets I would have included in the uh, major differences. Yes, you could have included, they're represented with an H. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, but the test is gonna be in black and white. The fact that it's a blue H is not really super important for you guys. Um, so I think the H is pretty self-explanatory. If it's a high pressure, it's gonna be an H, low pressure gonna be an L. So I don't know if I need to list it here, but if you wanted to, you could of course include an H. How about the low pressures? What did you include for them? Cool. Well, um, wet, sorry. Wet, warm, and cloudy. So as you can see there, I struggled. I truly do not know low pressure without saying high pressure first and then doing the opposite. So high pressure again is dry, cool, and clear, which makes low pressures the opposite of that, wet, warm, and cloudy. What else should we include? Yeah, the, the opposite. So counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, in and up. And then one more bullet. Okay, thank you. Wow, some people are in weight. Low density. Did you find any similarities? Yeah, Manson. They do spiral, so wind always spirals. It doesn't just blow in straight lines. That's, by the way, due to the fact that the earth is spinning. 
Any other similarities? No? Did you guys leave them all blank? You fell asleep. Okay, that's great. Um, what do they all control? Uh, they do the, they do kind of control the wind. We already talked about the wind. Guys, the weather. Both control or affect the weather. I will tell you that you everything we just wrote in this these two boxes here, this is stuff that you need to either memorize or be able to figure out without too much time. So the dry, cool, and clear, I think you got to memorize that. The clockwise out and down, I think you have to memorize that. I do think with high pressure, uh, or I'm sorry, with high density, you can kind of remember that because you should already know that when things are more dense, they sink. And if something was sinking, it's pushing down, which gives you high pressure. You do need to be able to recreate basically this chart right here. On the back, there's some goofy questions that we're going to skip over. I never really liked, um, are they more alike or similar? What's the most important difference? Um, but I do like this picture here. I have a color copy of it on the my PowerPoint. Let me pull it up. That might help. This picture right here. What What is this a picture of, first of all? I am assuming because you guys have not lived under a rock that you know what this is a picture of. I'm going to actually see if I can figure out exactly what this picture is from. Um, so what do you guys think? Yeah, yeah, it's a hurricane. So I'm assuming you have not lived under a rock and you know that hurricanes look like this. Um, and it's, you should hopefully be able to see in the background, you can kind of see Florida and the Southern United States here. Uh, so I did assume you knew it was a hurricane. Can we tell from this if this is a high pressure or a low pressure center? Sean, you got an idea? What would make you think that? Wait, it looks like it's coming in? Or going out. Okay. Uh, to me, it doesn't look like that. Yeah, Cam? Okay, so that's one thing to talk about. What is the condition? They're wet. What else do you see a whole bunch of? Okay. Um, it is in warm places. Clouds. So high pressure, remember, are high, dry, cool, and clear. We know hurricanes are wet. You can see clouds. You also know they're warm. So this is a low pressure. There is one more giveaway in this. With what? Going counterclockwise. I know you can't see movement on a PowerPoint or on the picture in front of you, but can you just picture just look at the, way the, uh, the way the clouds are going are definitely going counterclockwise. Um, so you do need to be able to figure out things like that. This is a low pressure system for all of those reasons that you guys just said. It's cloudy, it's wet. The winds are going counterclockwise. Um, so that is all stuff you do need to be able to create. Um, all right, so with that, oh, there's one more question. Oh, I didn't even include it up here. There is one more question. Oh, you know what? We haven't gotten to it yet. That's why we can't do it. Um, it goes along with right where we were yesterday on page 36. So we already did condensation. Remember, condensation happens when cold, warm air touches a cold surface. Cold air can't hold as much water as warm air and water droplets form. 
I have another think about it question for you. So please don't shout anything. I want you to think this through first. Um, what's the dew point when water when condensation happens? What's the dew point when condensation happens? When my warm air touches my cold air, cools, can't hold as much water, so water droplets form. Anybody know what the dew point is when water droplets are forming? You guys remember dew point? If you don't remember what dew point is, might be helpful to look that definition up. I believe it's um it's near the front of the packet. Dew point would be on page 33, so it's actually not that front. The dew point is the temperature at which water droplets form. The temperature at which air is 100% saturated. So if condensation is happening, what's the dew point? Um, what I'm looking for is the same as the temperature. So when the temperature and the dew point are the same, water droplets form. So when condensation is happening, the temperature and the dew point are the same. What's the relative humidity then if water droplets are forming? 100%, good. So when water droplets are forming, it means the air is all filled up with water, can't hold anymore, so it must be 100%. Those are two statements that you just need to know. Um, let's put them, I know we tried this at one point last week. Um, we ran out of space, I think. So when water droplets form, we know, if I do RH, is that good enough for you guys for relative humidity? What's the relative humidity if water droplets are forming? It, okay, so water droplets are forming. So relative humidity is 100%. And is DP good enough for dew point? What's the dew point if relative, or if relative humidity is 100%, water droplets are forming, dew point is equal to the temp, the temperature. Those two statements right there at the top. So when water droplets form, relative humidity is 100% and dew point is equal to the temperature. So look outside right this moment. What should the relative humidity be right now? Should be 100%. Why? Because it's snowing. Uh, what should the dew point temperature be right now? The same as the temperature, which of course my um, weather station's not operating right now. So I can't look that up. Um, I'll get it before the end of class. Now, some of you were just in lab. Jack, did you have the do, uh, relative humidity is 100%? Okay, so Jack was just in lab this morning um, and the temperature, uh, when we did the uh, sling psychometer and did the work on the uh, board, the temperature, oh, so let me try it again. The relative humidity was 100% because it's snowing. Sometimes it is not perfectly 100% here on the ground. It is at least 100% higher up in the atmosphere where the clouds are forming. So there's a little bit of discrepancy sometimes, <laughs> but it will always be high if it's snowing. All right, so we need to go here to density of air. That's where we are at right now. That's condensation. Density of air. We remember this. This is review, but I want to put it in your notes because this is something that people forget. We've talked about it over and over. Warm air rises. Why? Because it's less dense. Cold air sinks because it's more dense. I have mentioned this at least a dozen times. This chapter, it is something you need to remember. There's a vocab word for this process. Anybody remember what it's called? 
No. Convection. So if you did not know that this is convection, please add it in big, bold, highlighted letters. Warm air rises, cold air sinks because of convection. Convection, without convection, we'd have no weather. There, it wouldn't happen. So convection controls weather. And the first thing we're gonna talk about what convection controls is how clouds form. What are clouds made out of? Water. How do they form, you think? Where's the water come from? The ground. How do we get up in the air? Evaporation. What hap which way is the air moving when it evaporates? Up. So is the air more dense or less dense? Less dense. So how do clouds form? There's some processes for how clouds form. We start with, and I do want you to write this word for word, please. Warm air rises. That's the first thing. Warm air rises. Now I put arrows because people didn't like like words, so I used arrows. Warm air rises. As it's rising, it cools. The warm air rises. As it's rising, it cools. If it cools so much that it hits its dew point, so the next bullet is, Air hits its dew point. When air hits its dew point, the next bullet is water droplets form on dust particles. And that equals a cloud. So still really nothing mind blowing, no huge uh, science going on there. We know warm air rises because it's less dense. What you also should know is when it's, when it's rising and when it's warm, it spreads out. So those molecules cool. We just talked about if it hits its dew point, water droplets form. Water droplets are nothing, a cloud is nothing but water droplets. You can say this process easier though. And this is called adiabatic cooling. That's another vocab word. That's a new bullet, new word. Adiabatic cooling. It's one of my favorite words in earth science. It's just fun to say. Adiabatic, A-D-I-A-B-A-T-I-C. A-D-I-A. B. A T I C. Don't ask me to spell it again. Adiabatic cooling. That is a fancy word for air cools as it rises. So we could have shortened this whole sentence up here by saying adiabatic cooling, air hits its dew point, water droplets form cloud. So adiabatic cooling is just the fancy word for air cools as it rises. And that's how a cloud forms. I have a little, oops, sorry. Uh, just a reminder of what dew point is. So that's twice. In our notes, I've had you write the definition of dew point. You need to remember this, that it's the temperature at which water droplets form. And now I have an animation of a beautiful, fluffy, puffy white cloud forming. Ready for it? Okay. What's happening here? So let's start from the beginning, which is right here. What's happening to begin with? Air is rising. What happens as it rises? Cools. Hits its dew point. Boom, water droplets form. Warms, cool, or rises, cools, hits its dew point. Bam, water droplets form. 
over and over and over again. So this, the clouds get too heavy, it rains, blah, 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 blah. You've got clouds and rain. Warm air rises, cools, hits its dew point, water droplets form, done. You do need to remember that process. It's also a question on the lab. Uh, hopefully people did, got that one right. If you need to fix them, if you already did it, you can do that on tomorrow. Um, one last bullet there with that precipitation is when the cloud particles are too heavy to remain suspended in the air. When you're done with that, we are done for the day. I do, I did promise you some more practice with relative humidity and dew point. So here is your practice for dew point and relative humidity. It is your homework. It is 12. 12 dew point and relative humidity questions, which are right in your reference table, page 12. So I do want you working on this. You have 10 minutes, you have 12 questions in 10 minutes. I want you working on it now though. So if you have any questions that you can ask me, This is two-sided. Please go ahead and get started on this dew point and relative humidity questions. Asking me for help when you need it. And that's it. Does everybody have one? Uh, I think Sean has yours. Do both you guys get one? Okay. It looks like you do have an extra. I'll come grab it. <laughs> 